been so many things. Just a few more that I'll give you. Do not humiliate people. I mean, you'd think this is obvious, right? But in our interactions, we can get, even particularly even with our friends, we can actually make it very easy. And we do humiliate people. Oh, you can believe, let not some men among you laugh at others. We can laugh with others. It's very different to laughing at others. It may be that the latter are better than the former, nor let some women laugh at others. It may be that the latter are better than the former, nor defame, nor be sarcastic to each other, nor keep call each other by offensive nicknames, ill-seeming as a name connoting wickedness, to be used of one after he has believed, and those who do not assist are indeed wrongdoing. Let's not humiliate one another. To embarrass, to show up. Do we need to be, for ourselves to be big, do we need to put another down? For our message to be heard, do we need to put down another's message? And I think that this is particularly important when you're dealing in the world of interface or, you know, somebody else's understandings. In, for, in order to present Islam, do we have to put down all of the other faiths? In order to say, we are right, do we have to expose what is wrong? In order to make ourselves feel good, do we have to make another feel bad? And so when we communicate, can we not communicate in a manner which uplifts them, which makes them feel good about themselves, even though you may differ, and we'll come to that. Now, be gracious in argument and find common ground. And so when you approach another who you disagree with, don't argue. And Quran writes, and argue not with the people of the book, except in a gracious way. Be gracious in your arguments, in the way you address them, in the way you communicate with them. Unless it be such of them as are bent on evil doing. But rather say unto them, and this is the finding the common ground, we believe in that which has been bestowed from on high upon us, as well as that which has been bestowed upon high upon you. For our God and your God is one and the same, and it is under him that we sort of surrender ourselves. So you don't argue, you're gracious, and you find common denominators and common ground. You don't have to humiliate the other, to put the other down, in order to, to engage, to communicate. An obvious one to speak the truth. We're communicating, there should be no dodgy sales here going on, you know. We speak the truth when you come to your pet patients. Speak the truth. They need to know that. You can do it in a manner which is befitting and beautiful, but we shouldn't be, you know, hiding things. Don't backbite. That awful thing. But how do we communicate? It's easy to just put down another. Just before I end, this is a description of the Prophet Wasallam as told by his companion Ali to his grandson, Hussein. He was always cheerful, and this was about his dealings with other people, how he engaged with other people, how he communicated to other people. He was always cheerful easy-mannered and lenient. <coughs> he was not rough, noisy, vulgar, insulting, or miserly. He used to overlook what he dislikes without depriving others of hope or answering them negatively. He refrained from disputation, prattling, and curiosity. He spared others from three things. He never censured, found fault with, or spied on them. He spoke only what he hoped would be rewarded. When he spoke, his listeners lowered their head quietly, and when he was silent, they spoke. They never spoke haphazardly in front of him. If one talked in his presence, they listened to him until he had finished. He used to laugh and wonder at what they laughed or wondered at. You know, he participated with them. He was patient with strangers who were rude in both their talk and their requests just had impeccable manners, fundamentally impeccable manners. He was a gentleman, 
in every way. And that has to be the way that we communicate as ladies and gentlemen. Oh, they sound such like Austen-like notions of civility. But they really are the basis of how we can lift the levels. How we can take ourselves from the basis to sort of higher play in our dealings with people. Because we can always come down to another's level. They're arguing, they're vulgar, they are obnoxious. Goodness, we want to win the argument, we want to prove that we're right, we want to show our superiority of viewpoint, that our perspective of Islam is better than their perspective of Islam, that our view, our faith is right, that we are the clever ones, that we are the superior ones, that my goodness, aren't we proud? It's just so not the way the Prophet was. He didn't communicate in that way. He knew he was right. You know, he was, you know, he was having the word of God revealed to him. He knew he was right. He didn't have to be obnoxious about it. He communicated it still firmly, still with confidence, and we should be confident, but not arrogant. And so finally, the essence of good communication, for me, summed up in one verse. Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful teaching. But to be an effective communicator, no matter what you're communicating, it was a wonderful point made by Sami at the beginning, that our work is an ibadat, our life is an ibadat. We don't compartmentalize every little thing. When you're working as doctors, that is an ibadat. That is worship. It's very secular to think, oh, here's my, here's my faith. You know, this is my scarf or my beard or, um, you know, my five daily prayers, my fasting, my Arab. That's my Muslim life. And this is the rest of it. And it's amazing how big the rest of it is and how small the Muslim bit is. The Muslim bit, the Muslim bit, they're just for us. Pray for us so that we are connected. That's our communication with him. We fast to train ourselves, to strengthen ourselves. Again, another form of communication because we're having the sensory inputs of our stomach communicating submission and surrender. We do the Hajj, another form of sort of mass communication. <laughs> communicate to the poor, that we care, that we love them through our charity. What that's all about us? The rest of our life has to also be about self-surrender unto God. Everything that we do from the moment we wake up and even our sleep can be any about it if we do it with the right intentions to refresh ourselves to go on for the next day. Every 24, 24 hours a day you can be in a state of worship. If you see the whole thing with the right intention. And so if you address the whole thing from beginning to end, and you want to communicate wisdom wisely and beautifully, well, you've got it sewn up. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay, does that feel like happy time and your attention? Anything I've said? All the mistakes of any good? It's from God, the mistakes they are definitely mine. Just I think I'm here to later.